Do 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 dance to this club intro music. Hey everybody, welcome to the Nimble Urban Survivor. I am your host, Nick Catelli. Hope you're having a good day, good month, good year, good whatever. I know I am. I had a piece of cake for breakfast. That's how you know you're an adult is when you do stuff like that and you're like really proud of it. You're like, <laughs> I had chocolate cake for breakfast. I'm an adult. And then my reasoning for it is like, well, you know, cake is kind of like a donut. A donut is kind of like a bagel. Bagels are from Manhattan, so in reality, having a piece of cake at home in the Valley is like having a fancy bagel and schmear in Manhattan, New York. Boom, I said it. So let's jump into the show. Guys, today's topic comes from um, Ricky, and Ricky says, Nick, I hate working from home. So I guess the topic would be is, how do you survive working from home, which a lot of people are doing right now because, as you know, we have covid is going on, uh, and so a lot of people are being forced to work from home, which is good because, you know, you, get, you you still get to keep your job, right? And here's the thing about working from home. At first, it sounds amazing. You're like, yes, I don't have to drive in traffic. I don't have to deal with annoying coworkers. I don't have to laugh at all of my stupid boss's jokes, and I can do all of my work literally in a pair of Speedos. And it's this fantastic thing. And you almost want to like break out into a Disney song and dance. I'm working from home. But then too much of a good thing is not good. Because I hear a lot of people now are like, I actually want to go back into the office because I need human interaction. So really in reality, when you think about it, working from home will destroy the human race. And I don't mean that on an economic thing. Like people just get lazy about working from home and, you know, businesses go under because the work gets sloppy. I'm not talking about that. That's nothing. All right. If we continue to work from home the way that we do, you are going to de-evolve. And I read this on a website that some universities said, you know, the less human interaction you have, you'll start reverting back to like a caveman status and you'll start forgetting things and the first thing that's going to go is you're going to forget how to drive and that's terrible because you need to drive to be able to go to the grocery store and buy supplies so you can survive while working from home so that's gone you're going to forget about how to drive and then you know you're going to think you could walk to the grocery store but then because you're sitting so much all day at your home office you're going to lose the ability to walk and then you're not going to be able to get out of your apartment And then you're going to lose the ability to talk because you really haven't talked to anybody except through Zoom, which really isn't the best way to talk or have those human interactions or have that intimacy. So your brain is going to de-evolve into a caveman-like status. And that's what's going to happen. And it's going to have a world collapse. And I don't even care about the economy or the stock markets at that point. The human race will lose all of their intelligence, all of those things that we've created will be gone. It's kind of like when the Roman Empire created like the recipe for concrete. And then I think they became all stupid because of lead poisoning in the water. And then they just forgot stuff. That's what's going to happen with working from home is we're on the verge of being the next Roman Empire and collapsing. And then what's going to happen is we're going to de-evolve so much that it's going to be like in that Will Smith movie, I Am Legend. And I'm going to be like Will Smith. I'm going to be driving through the town uh, and and people are probably going to be trying to kill me like, you know, they were like those weird cannibal zombie things in the movie. Or what else can happen is that another animal species on the planet, like, you know, apes and monkeys, become intelligent and then rule the planet. Now we're looking at a planet of the apes scenario. So if we continue down this path of working from home, we're pretty much looking at a Planet of the Apes or a I Am Legend type catastrophic de-evolution human event. And that's not good. So how do we survive working from home? And the one thing is, I guess step one is set up a home office. And I don't mean like, I see people do this all the time. Like they just like set up a, a desk and a chair and they go buy like, a plant, a cactus or something. Like, it's my home office. And then they post it on Instagram. Where in reality, 
That's not a home office. If you want to get a real home office, number one, you need to get an investment, all right, for like a real office. Because now your home office needs to be a real office so you can feel like you're at a real office. So you have to get investors lined up and pitches for your home office. Also, you're going to have to work with the city. You're going to have to get a license because obviously you really in reality can't have a home office. I think that's technically illegal. Like you can't run a small business out of your apartment or something. I'm not sure what the legal jargon is on that, but you might want to double check. But you're going to need to get a license so you can zone your property to be a real commercial office. And how do you do that? You're going to have to go to the city, get some permits or whatever. That actually could take months to years. And you can't wait that long because by then, you know, you could be de-evolved and forget your own name. So what you're going to have to do is probably go to the bank, get some cash, and you're just going to have to bribe people across the board. Uh, and if you don't know how to bribe, like, politicians and things like that, you could probably just find a YouTube video on it or watch an episode of The Sopranos, and that should help. And with the right amount of money, you're probably looking at about $100,000 in bribes. You should be able to get that license so that now your property is zoned to be an official home office. So you want to, you know, get like a cereal bar and a break room built. You probably want to get rid of your bed, turn that into like your main office, set up some cubicles, get some computers, set up a modem network. So, you know, all that stuff that you would see in a regular office. Now you're bringing it to your office, right? Which brings me to step two. Because what's the one thing is, is that you're lonely. That's what it's all about, right, is the human interaction. So <clears throat> you could do that thing where you go and, like, invite your friends and your other employees to come now work at your office. But in reality, we don't want that because I don't know anybody that's ever happy working at their office. They just complain about who's sitting next to them and, you know, the small talk and the weird politics. If anything, if you didn't know, working in a corporate office is, is no different than, like, a middle school cafeteria. Those stain dynamics come into play. So you don't want to have that because that's just going to make you more emotionally suffered, right? So what you want to do is find the loophole to that, which is you want free labor. Now, I'm not saying slave labor because that's bad. I'm talking about that loophole, which is called interns. You want to go to your local universities. And I would go to probably like lower tier universities. I wouldn't go to like big private schools. Don't go to like Harvard or Yale or Cornell. You're going to want to go to like state colleges or like even community colleges, you know, where the universities don't look into you. Because, you know, those bigger schools are going to look into you and ask all these questions. You don't want that. You want a lower tier school where you can just go and be like, I need some kids. Um, I'm not going to pay them, but they're going to learn, right? So you go out and I would say you get about maybe like five to eight interns. And you want to treat them like they're actors in your show. So you want to give each one of your interns a role and be like, you're the office funny guy, you're the office HR person, you're my office best friend, you're my other office best friend that I talk shit with about the other best friend, and vice versa. You want to build your own positive office community and using these interns. And they'll do that because, you know, they want the college credit and they want the experience and they want something they can put on their resume. It's not about them actually doing work for you and helping you with your actual job. It's their job is to create that fun office sitcom -y type atmosphere, you know, kind of like in those old 90s sitcoms where, you know, every show like took place at a magazine or a marketing firm or something. I think one of them was like called Just Shoot Me. So Google just shoot me, and I think that would be a great example of how you want to set up like your fun comical sitcom office. So that technically would uh, we just went over is, is step three is train your interns to be a fun sitcom comical group, okay? Which then brings me to step four, which is you have to keep the interns happy. And the one thing I've discovered when it comes to, like, interns that are actors that are kind of just, you know, like, low-budget actors, the one way you keep them happy is you give them free food and free coffee. And I know you're thinking, you're like, oh, my God, it's going to be such such an investment, right? But here's the thing. I'm not saying you got to go out there and get them, like, you know, premium coffee or bagels or donuts or whatever. 
okay? You could just go to like a Dunkin' Donuts or a place that's like closing and ask for like all of their, you know, uh, food they didn't sell or their coffee they didn't sell. And they just say, you know, you're donating it to like a food shelter or something like that. Because in reality, that's that's kind of true. You know, you're donating it to your interns who are all broke and probably could use the free food. So in reality, yes, you are kind of helping people in need. And that's how you keep your interns happy. Is you just constantly give them food and coffee. But that leads to step five, which is what happens when they start, you know, asking questions. Because that'll happen is you'll have these interns that they're going to start, like, wanting to do more work. Or I guess in this case, like, actual work. And that can be a problem, right? Because you don't want them ruining this perfect comedic sitcom office atmosphere that you've created. So you have to deal with them right away. And it's kind of like in the mafia. Like, you know, if you have someone that you think is talking to the FBI, you got to get rid of them. Now, I'm not saying that you need to, like, go out and put a hit on this person. Please don't kill anybody. I beg you, don't do that. But I would say is, you know, obviously fire them, get rid of them, uh, have them sign an NDA that, so they can never talk with anybody else outside of your office about anything that goes on in there so that if they do tell other people that you have a bunch of interns trying to act like a comedic Just Shoot Me sitcom show, you can sue the shit out of them for pretty much all of their money. Uh, and that's how you're going to have to take care of that. And you can handle that, but you might actually just want to go out and get like an HR rep to do that, or even a lawyer to handle that. That could be a little bit of a financial investment. Actually, I would go more towards the lawyer route because then you have that like client attorney privilege thingy or something. I, I don't know the legal jargon, uh, but if you want to know more about lawyers and their clients, I would just watch Law & Order. I feel like you could learn a lot from watching an episode of Law & Order. Which kind of brings me to the next step is you have to kind of set up and I hate to say this, but a dictator-type propaganda sort of scenario. And let me explain what that is. And I know that sounds bad, but you, I, I have a perfectly good reason for this. So, for example, like in the country of North Korea, those people don't get to hear what happens in the outside world, which is a shame. Like, they don't even know about, like, McDonald's or Starbucks, which are two, like, really awesome places. But they never learn about that because their, you know, I guess, supreme leader cuts them off from the outside world. And I hate to say this. You kind of have to cut your interns off from the real world. You know, you don't want to give them Internet access because then they're going to be, like, reading about other companies and other interns and what they're actually doing, and then they're going to become, like, self-aware. It's like in Terminator when Skynet went self-aware and then nuked the whole planet. That's what could happen here is that if your interns become self-aware about what you're doing, they could nuke your whole home office and destroy the whole scenario. So don't give them Internet access. Don't let them watch the news. Um, also tell them that, you know, just to go home and come here. You know, obviously you don't have a lot of control when they leave your office but if they're interns, a lot of them are young. They might just go out, have a few drinks, and go to bed. That's what we're hoping. So when you're interviewing the interns, it might be something you bring up is, is ask them what their life is like outside of work. And if a lot of them don't have a life, that's great. Like th That's probably going to be the person you're going to want to hire. Because you don't want them to like catch on to what you're doing. But just to reiterate, don't become a fascist dictator. Don't make them all get the same haircut as you. Uh, don't starve them. Don't make them all wear like the same outfit. Don't make them like bow to you or pray to you or call you supreme leader. Don't do any of that. All I'm asking is just cut them off from the real world when it comes to news and information. Because again, Skynet, a lot of people die, could happen to you. Which brings me to the final step. Is that you need to accept that eventually... This will become your real job, is that you're running a fake sitcom office. But remember, it brings you a lot of joy and happiness. So you might end up losing your real job because you spend less time on your real job and more time on your fake sitcom job. And I, the way I see it, I mean, like, if your real job is really causing you all that pain, you don't need it. Granted, you're probably going to lose a lot of money, 
But at the end of the same time, what's more important, having a job, career, money, stability, a roof over your head, or being happy at your home office and not being de-evolved to a caveman and being enslaved by a planet of apes? You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But that's the final step. It's just that easy to have your own at-home office. But let's talk about the big thing. Because I know throughout this whole time, you're probably thinking, Nick, how do I make money so I can't lose this paradise I've created? Now, I have thought about that because I know it's a lengthy investment, right? Uh, even though you're not paying the interns. But here's, there's two definite ways you can make money. Number one, you can reach out to your coworkers, the ones that you like, who also are depressed at their at-home office, and pitch to them your sitcom fun, positive office where they can come and work and have fun and it's like an episode of a 90s sitcom. I'm not going to lie. Like, I wouldn't turn that down. And you just charge them money to uh, come and, and work at your office. You know, you, you it's kind of like uh, like those WeWork. You ever, I don't know if you guys ever heard of like WeWork, those offices. It's like, they're, it's like a big office building, but each office is like a completely different company and you're just renting the office space so you can seem like more legitimate to clients when they come to visit you, even though they'll see the huge WeWork sign on the wall and, and know that you're not. I've actually really went to one of those meetings before, too. I, I, I thought a guy, an agent in L.A. actually had a real office floor. And when I got there, I, I figured out very quickly he was just renting like a cubicle in one of those group offices. So you could go that route. And the good thing is, is with your office, you know, obviously there's the free uh, donuts and coffee, whatever, but you're not selling that. You're not selling, you're selling the experience. You know, you're not just an office. You're like an amusement park. You're like a Tony and Tina's wedding, uh, one of those mystery theater interactive things. That's what you're creating. And you can charge people for that, you know? And actually, really, in reality, you could open that up to also people that are like in offices that are having a terrible experience. And just be like, hey, why don't you come to my fun, interactive office? And it's going to be amazing. And you just charge people for that. I, you know, I would just charge them by the day. You know, probably a couple of hundred dollars. And that's a, a good source of income. Okay? And eventually, you never know, you could franchise that. Actually, that's a great idea. Copyright Nick Catelli, okay, I said it here, is someone should go out there and create like a fun, interactive office where all your coworkers are just actors, but they're super nice and super awesome to you. I, I'm not going to lie, guys. That, 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 you're looking at a multi-trillion dollar idea right there. Why WeWork hasn't picked that up, I, I don't know. I, sh I should pitch that th to them today. So that's the thing is, if you want to make money, you could franchise your office into like a, I guess, I don't know what you would call it, like an interactive dinner theater thing. I don't know what the name is because this is such a genius idea that it has no name. That's a great way to make money. Now, the other way I've thought about uh, and created for you guys is that, you remember, you're creating a sitcom, right, that you're actually living in. So why not actually set up some cameras and record it, make a pilot, and sell it to Hollywood? And then you have like a hit reality show which would be great, is like people, it's it's like a reality show meets 90s TV sitcom. I don't think that's something that's been done before. I mean, another genius idea by me. I'm coming up with so many genius ideas today. And you sell that. And all it is is people just tune in and they watch like the antics at your fun, fake, interny office. And you make tons of money through sponsors and uh, selling your show to networks. And then you become like a big Hollywood movie producer. All right. I, oh, my God. This is genius. I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I might go out and actually do this episode myself because the potential to make trillions of dollars is just that easy. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know if I even want to release this episode because I kind of want to keep these ideas to myself. But you know what? I'm not a selfish guy. OK, it's kind of like that guy who invented the uh, the cure to polio. He released that to like everyone for free because he didn't want to be a dick. And Nicotelli is no dick. So guys, there are two great ideas for you right there. Um, and, and that's it. I, I think I just solved 
working from home. But in reality, I just created like two huge business opportunities for the human race. And that's what I love about this podcast, guys, is not only are we helping you survive situations, but we're helping you make trillions of dollars. Even though right now we're doing a coin shortage, and I'm not going to lie, I went to a 7-Eleven yesterday, and they asked me for exact funds through dollar bills. So there could be a conspiracy here where eventually physical currency, coins, and paper money are going to go extinct. Uh, But, you know, obviously that's not a topic we would talk about on my show. Um, but I guarantee there's probably another podcast out there that's, you know, would discuss that. I'd be actually interested to hear that. So guys, that's our time today. Uh, I think this was a great episode. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, if there's anything you ever want to talk about on the show, feel free to contact me through my website at www.cutellicomedy.com. Uh, Remember, I know that there are a ton of amazing, fantastic podcasts that you can listen to out there. So as always, I really appreciate that you take the time to listen to mine. So guys, remember, have a great day, great month, great year, great whatever. I hope you make a trillion dollars off this episode. If you do, uh, just take me out to lunch or something. Buy me a sandwich as a reward. I'd really appreciate that. So have a good one. And remember, guys, survive out there.